and then but we would also save costs in re market research in Cuba because Thank they already know the company, the or they already know the country. Which solution do you recommend? Uh, in our prop to uh, have us recommend uh, at least more than one alternative. Uh, we're pressing that each of these are all solutions that could be viable for uh, EHI sent to the Cuban market. And you were EHI, which would be the two recommendations? It depends on the risk that you're comfortable with. Um, if EHI is comfortable with a more high risk investment, we certainly recommend uh, doing solution two, partnering directly with the government, as that is the way to ensure most control. If you're looking at a lower risk investment, probably the third one, and looking into uh, CGI International. I think that the second one has the highest potential for profitability because once you have that relationship with the government, then you could move from just being the, the people that move the materials around the company, I mean around the country, to also going into the traditional enterprise service of renting out to tourists and the hotels that you help build by shipping the materials and moving them that you needed from the Havana countryside into I mean, the Cuba countryside into Havana. So it has the longest potential for uh, return on investment. Is the Cuban government uh, open to importing used cars from Mexico? The Cuban government has, actually, has like made it clear a large demand for those cars and also at keeping them at a low cost. Obviously, uh, since we're you know, discussing the entry strategy in general, obviously wouldn't be far enough to know if they're specifically asking from Mexico, but that would be the most economically feasible option uh, for enterprise at that point, and one with high volume. Of course, there are surrounding countries, Costa Rica as well, where cars could be brought in, but Mexico really has that volume so that when those cars depreciate, there's enough products to send them to Cuba without risking being too depleted in surrounding branches and surrounding countries in Cuba. So there's, a, there's enough volume there, really, which is why we focused on Mexico. Follow up on that uh, question. So now that I, once I get the cars there from Mexico, how do I operate a business? How did I set? What's my business structure in Cuba now that I have cars there? The business structure in Cuba uh, would be similar to what would be suggested by the third plan. Um, we're looking with, uh, we're looking to really capitalize there with tourists. Um, there's, we talked about how there's not really enough funds for the average Cuban to be renting those cars because the prices are marked up. So the business structure would be similar to that in America, um, but a way that we would initially be competitive would be based on that price and that we're using depreciated cars. Um, and so the structure would be kind of marketing those cars and using what we know about the market in general um, and kind of collaborating with, uh, with the, the market research that we had already done, so. Is one of your alternatives to, uh, in addition to partnering with Geely to do manufacturing on your own? restricted from doing that by the Cuban government, or was that just not a uh, uh, cost play that you were willing to consider? It wasn't necessarily cost play we were considering, given that Enterprise doesn't have a lot of significant experience in the actual manufacturing, um, and as more so just kind of acquiring. And we weren't sure as to the political instability and regulations of the Cuban government allowing an American firm to produce. Um, and so we kind of stuck with uh, just using the products that were already existing with the Geely Corporation and using Enterprise's customer service and brand combined with their market knowledge of Cuba since they're already supplying other firms um, to, to help differentiate. But if they did want to venture into the actual manufacturing aspect of the car industry, then they could because we, we, viewed it, we looked at an article where there is an American company that is setting up a manufacturing plant of tractor trailers of tractors in Cuba, and they're gonna ship the parts from America and the manufacturing in Cuba, so they have opened up the doors to manufacturing possibilities for American companies. And, and when you talked about Geely, I thought I heard you were talking about a two-year contract, so I don't know what, what drove that and what risks are associated with that. Uh, we, were just, we were just saying that um, in order to, like this is our idea of like the most mutually beneficial contract, but just for us doing market research for being able to penetrate the US market with Chinese cars would probably take three to six months just to get good like, research, and then we would have one and a half to two years maybe of negotiating and legal okay, so contracts. You would, so you wouldn't have, it's not your contract for right. you to no. cars for you for two years. It's to reach an agreement. We give me a timeline in terms of implementing the plans in general. So. Mm -hmm. what? Why I, I saw the Geely cars operate in the U.S. Why why was that a necessary component of the, that agreement? Well, we felt as 
if um, seeing as since Geely is already supplying other rental car services in Cuba, uh, we would definitely have to have another attractive incentive for them um, because they're already supplying to locals. Um, so, but they have expressed interest in trying to enter the American market, and it certainly would be an unprecedented move for EHI. And so that's sort of mitigating with them. They share their knowledge with us in Cuba, and we agreed to bring in a small, tested sample group of cars um, from their company to rent them out in the United States, which would make EHI the first company that has brought in Chinese produ produced cars. In the United because States. Geely is currently looking into figuring out how to bring their cars into the U.S. market. Those are, that's really one of the main things that we wanted to focus on with both of these plans. Obviously, we have with these three plans. Obviously, we have a combination of high versus low risk and uh, high versus low risk with each of them. But each of these plans has the unique element and an unprecedented move that would allow EHI to continue to be a leader as opposed to a follower within, within the industry. Can you uh, envision uh, combining elements of each of your plans into a single plan? Certainly. Um, it, well, I, we had kind of began to do that actually until we had realized the instructions are more so telling us to separate them as alternatives to give you all the choice depending on your level of risk. Um, we could certainly can combine them into certain elements, um, but I think that uh, it would involve obviously tweaking a, a lot of the details for it to be plausible. Um, I think that you could certainly have the government presence uh, alongside with a traditional business sector like we talked about the third one in terms of being supplied by CGI. Um, I'm not sure if the depleted car model would work as well with the two. Um, with the first two that I just mentioned, but those two could certainly work coincide each other, and it would take a little more additional, I think, uh, resource planning to in incorporate the third plan as well. Our, our idea behind the, like the second one, the second idea <coughs> of working with the government is hopefully by showing the community and the, and the people of Cuba and also the government that we want to help them, uh, that we're not just trying to be a government uh, American company coming in and just trying to reap profits. We also want to help them. Uh, Consciously, and also, if the Cubans are on our side, then they would be more likely to also recommend to tourists and other people to rent from Enterprise as well when we do establish uh, the the traditional Enterprise like tourist rental service next to the airports and hotels. And I'd like to note that that's in response to uh, social trends in Cuba right now. The government being open to foreign direct investment, President Obama's visit is unprecedented, and that's due to a response to the Cuban people, not really in terms of social trends, having the same aggressive sentiment towards the United States that has been the past 50 years. Um, these doors are opening, and so we feel as if it's, it's the most beneficial move for EHI to take advantage of that. Do you see any risks that changing piece, but the tourism piece might change um, depending on our policies. Do you think about that in your analysis? So, yeah, we did consider political risks. Unfortunately, like we had just discussed, with this situation as it is, uh, never been done before, uh, it is largely the unknown. Um, and so we considered the possibility that we could lose traction in terms of ability to enter. Um, and at, at that point, we would have to kind of reevaluate our stance in general because like we said, unlike other countries, uh, you know, the United States, Belgium, Sweden, France, I mean, the government can do whatever they want. So I guess I could more properly answer your question if you gave me an example of what you might mean, um, because they could really do anything. No, that's fair, right? So it's, it's really how do, you, how do you try to protect your, your strategy as much as possible? I think, I think by bifurcating between tourism and ag, you've done it wonderfully mm -hmm. because currently, you know, there's an ag business there and, 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 and there's investment there, but, but the tourism is the play. So you either you mitigate it by lobbying or partnering with other industries that might be trying to get in the country and just continue to try to get the policies to go in your direction. By oh sorry, I will read. No, that's right. By um by proposing this like arbitrary ten million dollars is more of a statement that we want to help uh, help like build up the com uh, the country. So we would hope that other like organizations and people that are interested in investing in Cuba would follow suit other companies that were like, oh, we'll help build roads, because it does take a lot of money to build roads in order to and build infrastructure. So we would hope that we would be the leaders to say, here, look, we're going to invest this much in the country, and then other 